I'm the program coordinator for VMA. Uh, Brianne Bellwood is going to be my assistant this morning. Once I'm in presentation mode, it is hard to monitor the chat at the same time. So she's going to be my moderator. Brianne is one of the uh, instructors within the program as well. So you can see her for the part of the she's doing. Okay, what I want to do this morning is I have a little PowerPoint presentation that I put together for you guys. And I do want to um, walk you through that. If after the presentation you have some questions still about the program or what's involved, then by all means you can go ahead and ask those questions and I'm happy to answer whatever I can for you. So just to kind of get you in the know, um, with the VMA program, I, I want to kind of give you an overview of, of what it's all about. See if I can get my slides to go. So it is a one-year certificate program, and we cover a huge range of species within the program as well. So we're doing everything from exotics to small animals, cats and dogs. We do a lab with rabbits. You guys will work with farm animals, we have some sheep on campus, we have our college learning schooling horses that you guys will get to work with, and, and then our college uh, cattle as well. So it's a bit of a broad spectrum. Our intent is to give you exposure to a whole multitude of things and then have you find your passion within that so that when you get out in the industry, you can decide where the best fit is for you. Okay, so it's oops, you know, it's trigger happy. Let's do it too fast. Let me go back one. Really go back one. There we go. Okay, so as far as the program itself, we are actually in the 12th year of the program this year. We've had 11 graduating classes. This will be our 12th graduating class. So it's a program that's been around for, it's still fairly new to the whole veterinary industry. And there's not a lot of locations that are training students in this program. So it's still a bit in its stages. Things work very slowly in this industry sometimes to sort of spread the word and, and get everybody uh, familiar with it. But we're working hard at that. The nice part about this class is we have a maximum of 28 students. So we, at the end of the academic year, you know all of your classmates really well. We become one small family. And I definitely know at the beginning of every class, if somebody's missing, we want to know where somebody is, what, you know, I want to make sure that everybody's okay. We, we tend to sort of look out for each other. Um, you guys will do a lot of hands-on labs within the program. So the lecture component is very much tied into the skills that you'll be learning in labs. So we learn the theory behind them and then we go into the lab and you guys have the opportunity to practice a lot of those skills that we've been learning about. You're going to do some farm shifts for me. So in second semester, you guys will go up to the dairy barn, for example, and you'll have the opportunity to do a shift on the dairy barn. And in the, in the dairy barn, and you'll milk those cows. Half of our dairy herd has a uh, robotic milker, and the other half of our herd is manual milk. So you guys will have the opportunity to participate in that. And along with that, too, um, we feed calves in the morning. So every new calf that's born is um, separated from mom and gets put into like a crate. And then we can feed those guys every morning and evening. So you guys will have the opportunity to be up close and personal with those calves as well. And then kind of at the as a wrap up to the whole program, at the end of, of your schooling at the college, you will go to for practicum. And then all of the skills that you've been learning for the entire academic year, you will put to use when you go out into a, a real working practice. So, and it isn't always necessarily a practice that students decide that they want to go to. I have had students go to wildlife rehabs. I've had students go to humane societies. So we can definitely look at other alternatives that are a bit outside the norm and thinking a bit outside the box. Okay. 
So let me just kind of tell you a bit about some of the labs that you'll be involved in. So equine labs are one of the uh, components that you'll get to do. These guys that you see in the picture are our schooling horses, the college ones. So a big part of your job when you get into practice will be handling all of these animals and restraining them. So learning how to put them on, how to tie them, how to pick up their feet how to put the switch on, all of those bandaging, all of those will be skills that you might be asked to do. I'm not sure, I can hear some background sound, so if you guys turn your microphones off for me, that would be awesome. So you guys will have the opportunity to do that in your um, large animal class. You will do some kennel care and record keeping as well. So, Doing medical records is a really important component at every veterinary practice, and it's something that you guys will be involved in on a daily basis. So learning what information needs to go in the medical record, how you're supposed to format that, what needs to, um, what happens when it doesn't get included, all of those types of skills. And then when you're doing your kill care, you guys will be in charge of looking after an animal, and this will be outside the class hour. So I want everybody to expect that you're not just in a regular class like high school where you're 8.30 to 2.30 and you're done. There, there are some things that you need to be doing outside of class hour within shifts with health care and health care, but also when you're looking at them. We can't be having students in there and feeding them when we're using those animals in labs. What has to happen? after the class is done for the day. So typically after 4.30, before 8.30 in the morning, some of the clinic duty shifts will happen here on the weekends. But something that I want you to be prepared for when you come, that it isn't just a regular school day. And certainly something to think about when you're figuring out, okay, can I drive in every day? Or do I have kids at home that I need to get back to and now I need to meet that work to be able to after hours and weekend type things. We have a very good working relationship with a lot of our local shelters. So we have a humane society in um, City Hall, there's an SPCA in Bonneville, there's an SPCA in Lloyd Minster, and we work closely with them for the opportunity to work with their animals. So they bring us animals on campus and we will use those in labs to practice restraint um, for us to give injections to the second year HDs. We'll be using them in the surgery labs. So the intent is to make this very much a win-win. They have animals that we can help get adopted. Students will take pictures of them. We'll post them up online for our staff. If anyone's looking for a new animal, students are welcome to adopt them. So you may go home with more animals than you can get forward with. Um, but it is a very good working relationship where we're trying to help them get these animals adopted. We oftentimes, because of our location, don't necessarily have access to as many animals as we need to do um, our labs and, and run with the program. So we are fortunate to have access to the animals that they have in the shelters. With our exotic labs, we have the opportunity, some of these are student owned, some of these are, um, there we go. It's fine coming up, sorry, right the back. We've had the opportunity to work with, COVID doesn't into that fact. Um, we've had Petsmart from Lloyd Minster come with a bunch of their critters. And then we talk a lot about husbandry for these guys, for feeding, for care, and then have the opportunity to be able to work with them and students to be able to handle them. So the one down on the very bottom is a chinchilla. The one on the upper top left is a hedgehog. We had um, an iguana in, a snake in, guinea pigs, whatever we, we have the availability to bring in for you guys to handle. Is what we'll do and give you the opportunity. 
school line labs. So these are college-owned animals that we have um, a manual shoot system. We have a hydraulic shoot system. So we're teaching you guys to use both of those and to do specific restraint things. So you'll learn to hold her on, have it hide her head. We'll show you how to use a ball gun. Um, as a team, we'll stomach shoot. So we'll do some of these skills that you guys might run into if you're working in a bovine practice or you have uh, cattle at home. You want to learn how to, to do that for when you need it at home. As far as nursing care goes, so we have lots of tools that we're going to show you how to use and what you might be used in industry so you get very familiar with them when it comes to things like castration and putting in ear tags and dehorning, things like that. You have to be able to recognize those particular tools and know exactly how they're used. The student on the right, we spend a lot of time talking about um, reading medication labels and figuring out dosages for if you have a 800 pound steer and you've been prescribed antibiotics, how do you figure out how much to actually give that animal? What route do you give it? Where do you actually inject it? What kind of things can you look for as far as reactions? So we'll spend some time looking at a multitude of different medications, get you familiar with what medications are used for, and then how to read those labels and determine if there's any questions from clients about particular information that's on there, then you can help them to understand that. Coming up, but very slowly. <laughs> there we go. Uh, as far as lab safety goes, so this is something that you will learn right off the bat when you come to college in your one of your first courses. And we have a multitude of things where if you're working in this industry, you need to be safe to be able to do it. So the lady on the upper left, if you're working with any sort of specimen, what does that involve? Some of them you need, you'll always have a either a scrub top or a lab coat, but some of them you'll need gloves because some of those um, parasites or diseases that, that animal has can be spread to humans. So we want to make sure that everybody is safe if we're handling those animals. You guys on the picture on the right will have the opportunity to go over to our fire training center and learn how to use a fire extinguisher. So we will light a fire and you guys will go in, learn about what type of extinguishers extinguish what type of fires, and then you'll have the opportunity with this big blazing fire to try to put that out. The picture on the bottom left is um, in second semester, you guys will learn how to take x-rays. And one of the things that happens with x-rays is radiation exposure. So we'll talk a lot about here's some protective that you need to wear if you're going to be dealing with x-rays. are coming up rather so. So with the farm shifts that you guys are going to do, like I mentioned before, you guys will go to the dairy barn and you'll help to milk the cows in the morning. It is an early morning shift. They milk at 4.30 in the morning, but it's a one-time opportunity to go out there. Most dairy barns, because of the biosecurity, don't let people in. So this is a, a rare opportunity without a working dairy barn to have a chance to go out and work with these cows. The middle picture we have sheep that are here on campus, and you guys will have the opportunity to go out and we'll be feeding them. Um, we'll bring them in, we'll weigh them, you guys will be checking feet, trim boots, and things like that with them. And then the picture on the right, we have a, a horse care shift that you guys will go out and be scattered on. And then you'll go out with our school horses give them a little extra TLC and a couple of them that need to be fed a little extra diet because they're seniors now. You guys will brush them, check the water, make sure everybody's okay, nobody's with any cuts or blemishes. And then um, as, a, as a group, you guys will do that at least one time per semester. Hopefully, if COVID doesn't get in the way and, and the world can straighten, we'll have the opportunity to go back on a field trip again this year. Um, the 
picture on the right, we were at the End of the Humane Society, and the gentleman in the picture is their behavioral specialist. So they would be examining all the animals that come into the facility and determining whether or not they're fit for adoption. We, that is a great opportunity as far as employment after you guys graduate. So it is a, a place that I want to expose you to as a potential um, employment opportunity. So I want you to learn a bit more about what's involved. The Edmonton Humane Society has their own surgical suite. So every animal that comes in there is standard in surgery before it gets adopted out again. So that's a, a really good opportunity with some of the things that you're learning in school to be able to put that to use out in industry. So we had the we had the chance to tour that facility. The picture on the left, we went to the Entity Police Service and we learned all about um, the care and training that they're doing with those dogs. So things like sniff detection, like tracking. Um, we even had one of their other officers dress up in a big suit and and go the dog sent the dog for a takedown. So he grabbed him by the arm and literally tackled them to the ground. So it was interesting to learn about how that whole training works and where these puppies come from and how they're handled and and then we went into their um, their bay where they keep all their vehicles. And he showed us how, where the animals stay when they come in the vehicles on the ride along with them. And then if they have, what I thought was one of the coolest things, if they have an emergency, so they get out of the vehicle and they're trying to arrest someone and all of a sudden they get in trouble, they can click the little button that he has on his waistband there and it automatically pops the door and the dog can come out. That was very cool. And be back up, if you will. So as far as what do they do, because this is a question that we get all the time, what kind, of, what kind of things are we training DMAs to do? Front end will be one of the big things. So in the veterinary practice, you guys you will have the skills to work behind the counter, to answer phones, to answer client questions, to do some invoicing, those types of skills that um, receptionists would do in the front end. You guys are learning those skills. Customer service type skills. Client support is absolutely one of the other things that's going to be key. So being able to answer the phone, figuring out whether or not this is a question that you can answer or you need to appeal to maybe a veterinary technologist or to the veterinarian themselves. And then the picture on the left, answering questions for clients when they come in and they're unsure about what their invoice was or, or what particular things that they need to be aware of. That's something information that you can help them with at the market. So that's going to be a, a daily thing as part of your situation. Maintaining clinic inventory. So if we have a, a physical exam room, and we go in there, you will be in charge of making sure that everything is cleaned and organized, that all of the supplies are restocked and things are ready to go for the next patient. So you're efficient in helping everyone within the team to make sure that things run smoothly. Sanitation and maintenance, there is a big chunk of the day to day where we have cattle in and horses in. That it's clean up, and, and I don't want to lead you astray and make you think that it's all hugging kittens all day. There, there is some work that needs to be done that you will get assigned. But there's a part of that that you can be critical because if we don't disinfect as well and we don't do a good cleanup, there is potential for disease transfer to the next animal that walks in that chute. So it's a key role within the team to make sure that we are keeping animals safe as well. Handling pharmaceuticals. So when an order comes in, making sure that things get onto the shelf and knowing what medication is prescription, what medication you can sell clients over the counter, what has to be cleared through the veterinarian and prescribed to them. I, we spent some time learning about 
all of those categories of medications which you're familiar with. So the regulations within the industry and what you can and can't accept. Inventory management. So inventory is a big part of what happens in any facility, whether that's a, a PetSmart pet store or a veterinary practice, knowing what products to carry, what products are selling, what, where to keep those products, if that in the fridge or on the shelf. So we spend some time talking about inventory management and you guys learning the business side of okay, what, what kind of markup is there on our products? How many should we have on the shelf? When do we reorder those? And then how do we actually order that? So we talk about getting them through the major drug center. How do you put that order in? Looking up codes for those. What happens when the order comes in? Who's putting that into the computer and making sure that all of those numbers that the computer is spitting out as far as inventory are accurate? So it's a big component to what would happen in a day-to-day -day practice or a day-to-day -day facility like PetSmart selling the amount of product that they do. Grooming and nail trimming. So you guys absolutely will learn how to trim some nails as um, the veterinary technologists are doing physical exams. The grooming part, let's say this dog on the left has been boarding in our facility for two weeks. Now mom is coming to pick him up and we want him to smell great before he goes home. Maybe this is a therapeutic bath this animal needs because he's got some parasites and, and now we need to give him a bath with a specific product. All of that is part of the skills that um, you guys are capable of doing. As far as patient restraint, if I hear one thing from practicum placements, it's that they want you guys to have great restraint skills. So we spend a lot of time talking about low stress handling and fear free handling, and another term that you might have heard in the past. When patients typically come into a practice, it's really stressful for them because typically not a lot of great things happen. We bring them in, we're helping them to give them vaccines, right? They're meeting a bunch of strangers, they get a bunch of strange smells, they might be coming in for a surgery, so mom leaves them for the day. So all of that to them is tied to very negative thoughts. We want to try and convert that and say, okay, how can we make this really low stress for them? What can we do from a positive side and make that so that they're not so petrified the second that we open the front door and they get their first scent? So we talk about, can we use some things like towel wraps? Can we use a lot of treats to make it a really positive experience? What kind of pheromones can we spray in the environment to calm them down? So similar to what lavender would be for people when we know that it causes relaxation. Same sort of thing with animals. We'll spend a ton of time on all of these species to talk about how can we do that in the best way and consider the patient first and foremost. Assisting with veterinary procedures. So this kind of goes hand in hand. If this animal needs the picture on the left, this animal is a rabbit that they roll down into their lap and they're trimming nails. The picture on the right is one of our other um, veterinary technologists doing a physical exam. And the DNA is restraining. So if this animal needs an eye exam or an ear treatment, that will be the DMA that comes in and is being part of that whole equation to do the restrainer and make sure that we can get that procedure done. So kennel care, you guys will have the opportunity in both semesters to look after some animals for me. The dogs will require walking three times a day and the feeding and cleaning of their kennel. You guys will be the eyes and ears for what's happening with that particular patient for your assigned uh, amount of time. So you will be the one going in and doing all the records and making sure that that animal is taken care of. And that if there's any sort of issue, I would go through the record and address whatever was going on with that particular patient. The record keeping, this is one thing that as a veterinary association, we always could improve upon. So we spent some time talking about records. You guys will have the opportunity to do both digital records and um, paper records. So when you're in your computer class, we talk about what 
sort of um, information needs to be in those records, and then we'll give you scenarios where you input that information. The stuff that you do on the live patients will be as the patient is in the clinic and you're looking after them. Assisting with large animal procedures. So this kind of goes hand in hand with what we talk about with small animals. So the picture on the left, somebody is drawing blood and the VMA is just bringing this to you to, for a blood draw. The picture on the right, we have a twitch on, so this horse might be getting an injection. Something is happening with these large animals. We need somebody to be part of that team that comes in and helps with the restraints. So we can get that, that procedure done efficiently and as low stress as possible. Operating handling equipment. So like I mentioned before, we have a hydraulic chute and we have some manual chute. So if you have bulls coming in for semen evaluation or you have cows that are coming in to be pre checked, somebody has got to be working the head gate and tail gate for every single one of those animals that comes in. So if we can have someone very efficient at that and skilled in handling that equipment, that is a big bonus to any veterinary practice. You guys will learn how to assist with radiographs. So you will learn about positioning and about the machines themselves and what all the dials do and where you need to turn them. So, and then with the actual holding the animal as the x-ray is being taken, that will be something that, that we'll do in second semester. And then to process that image. So some of the digital images go immediately to the computer. Some of them you have to scan the cassette before that image will go on to the computer. So I want you to learn both methods. We have both of those digital technologies that are called. Surgical prep preparation. So prior to a surgery happening, all of the required instruments need to be um, picked out of the drawer picked and then wrapped and that pack will go through a sterilization process so that there is no risk of us creating an infection with that surgery, especially if we're going into an abdomen, for example, like a spay. So you'll learn what is the proper procedure to actually wrap the pack. There's some protocols that come with that. And then how do we actually sterilize it so that it will be appropriate to use in surgery? Surgical prep of the patient. So this will happen kind of hand in hand with that in your surgery course. What do you need to do as far as clip? Where are you putting? What are the landmarks that you're looking for? And then as it comes to all of the solutions that you're putting on that abdomen, what is the order that you're doing that in? What's the process? How do you actually get that done so that the patient itself then is prepared for surgery? Maintaining lab equipment. So all of the practices will have some sort of lab equipment that needs to be cleaned and maintained and updated with new software, those types of things. So we'll walk you through some of the machines and what sort of um, processes you need to do in daily or weekly or monthly. There's lots of different um, protocols that follow that too. And somebody in the clinic needs to be in charge of that or it gets overlooked. So it's a skill where you can come in and be helpful with the day-to-day -day operation. Preparing lab samples for shipment. So let's say that this is something that needs to go off to a lab for a specialist to look at. We're just not sure of the cells or we want someone that's in that area to, to verify the gap. what we saw is exactly what was there. Or maybe this is an animal that we've done a post mortem on and has died, and we're trying to figure out why did that animal die because we have 500 other calves that are in that same field and we want to make sure we can do something about it. So maybe this is a tissue sample of a lung that we want to sit off and get analyzed. So you guys will learn those because we want to make sure that it gets to the lab in one piece and that they're able to analyze it once it gets there. So how do we send it? Who are we sending it to? What kind of paperwork do we need to get done? You'll learn all about that. We were very fortunate to have a new teaching facility built in the fall of 2018. So on the picture that you see schematic here, everything in the kind of tan colored area 
is all of our lab spaces. And we've divided those into three big teaching labs. Everything that you see as gray, the dark gray, is the rest of the clinic that was actually built as a working facility. So there's examination rooms, there's surgical suites, there's an x-ray room, there's kennel, um, specific dog and cat kennel ward in there. There's a, a dental suite. So we have all of it built where we can run it as an actual practice and, and you guys get that experience of what that would actually look like. As far as career opportunities go, I would say probably the most common place for graduates to go is into a veterinary practice, and then it just depends on where their passion is. So there are specific small animal practices. There's exclusive exotic animal practices. So if that happens to be your passion, it can be somewhere that you can explore. Maybe have more of an interest in large animal and you want to get into a mixed animal practice or an equine exclusive practice. Those are all out there and available as well. Working at SPCAs and humane societies, they're always in need of animals. Unfortunately, there are tons of animals that need new homes. And these are places that are always looking for employees to help. There's a lot of work to do when the Edmonton Humane Society, for example, has 200 animals in there at one time. That's a lot of laundry, a lot of dogs that need to be walked, a lot of cats that need to be cared for. There's been a lot of surgeries that take place before those animals get rehomed. So if that's a, a passionate area that you have, those sorts of job opportunities are available to you. Working at retail outlets, so somewhere like a PetSmart, they're looking for trained people that have some experience in some of those exotics that we talked about. You guys do a course in nutrition, so when someone comes in and they have questions about the 500 bags of food that are on the shelf in there, you can put them in the regulation and get more information about that. The UFAs of the world, they have medications that are in there, lots of pet supplies and large animal supplies that you can be helping owners find and, and put them in the right direction there as well. Wellness centers, so there's lots of rehabilitation facilities that are looking for people to help. You won't necessarily be doing the massage like this gentleman on the right or chiropractic adjustment. But if that horse is there and it's had surgery and it's staying for two weeks, somebody needs to be taking care of them and feeding them and walking them every day and making sure that he's got water. So if that happens to be a wellness facility or a rehab facility, then certainly that's another job opportunity for you guys. And, and not just exclusively for horses. There's lots of day facilities that um, small animals will come into as well. So this picture on the left, just out of curiosity, is uh, um, an underwater treadmill for horses. So the horse will be, someone will be holding it and the treadmill will go move underneath the horse and the resistance through the water helps to build up muscle for this horse without all of the stress on its joint. The picture in the middle is all the infrared lights that they know can heat muscles and can repair um, nerve endings and things like that. So it is getting to be a big industry. We're thinking outside the box, just like in human industry with lots of alternative medicine options. As far as business owners, I had one student in the past that um, was really interested in starting up a little pet sitting service. So when owners went away on holiday, she would go into their home and look after their pet, walk their dog. So the pets could stay in the comfort of their own home as opposed to going to a boarding facility. They had the, the person come into the home instead. So she had a great full-time business just doing pet sitting services. So I think there's lots of job opportunities that are out there. We just sometimes need to think outside the box and, and find where your passion is. I've had students that have gone into um, wildlife rehab and continued on with some of their training and, and worked in wildlife rehabilitation centers. There's lots of things out there that are potentials.
And then this last picture, this cat in the picture, his name is, is Dobby. He was one of our dairy barn cats for at least 15 years. And he lived in the dairy, excuse me, he was their official breeder. So every time you came to the dairy, he was the first thing that you saw. He, he loved the students, wanted to get picked up all the time. So he, he tended to be our dairy barn mascot for the longest time. And he actually ended up living with me for a while because he went into the horse farm, decided he wanted to pull one of the horses in the stall and got kicked and pelvis got broken. So he needed some rest and TLC. So he came to live with me for a while as well. So I'm hoping that, you know, this kind of piqued your interest and that if you didn't know much about the program before, that that gave you some information and hopefully we can see you again in the fall. So with that, I'm going to stop presenting, and I'm going to open it up to questions. If you had anything that you wanted to ask about the program or something that I didn't cover in the session that you wanted to ask, you can type in the chat box. You can um, just keep your microphone off and ask whatever you like. Any questions from the group? Oh, look at you, you're gonna go easy on me. Do you see questions, Brianna? Am I just missing any? Nope, nothing, nope. nothing in the chat yet. Okay. Okay, well, if you happen to think of anything down the road and you go, oh darn, I wish I would have asked that, you absolutely can get a hold of any of our recruitment officers. And absolutely ask them they can forward information on me and we can get you the information that you're looking for. So if you didn't think of it now, don't, don't panic. We can still get you that information down the road. Okay, well, if there's no questions, I want to thank you guys for attending this session. Thank you, Brian, for being my moderator today. And hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you, guys.